Recently, our country commemorated Memorial Day. Some years Memorial, some years Memorial Day occurs on Shavuos, occurs on the same day that we recite Yizkar. And obviously, Memorial Day and Yizkar are different. But there's no question that there are some values that are the same. We probably, as a result of living here in the United States of America, um, we are grateful citizens. We have a connection and we mourn the loss of those who have fallen. Gary Scott Smith recently wrote an article in Faith and Freedom in which he looked at presidential speeches on Memorial Day. And he more or less summarized them as the following theme. That presidents speak and they say, God, remember those who have fallen in battle for the sake of the United States. And those who are living should pray and work hard for peace. That's a very, I think, accurate summation of what many presidential speeches sound like on Memorial Day. Memorial Day has for many become a shopping holiday. Obviously not this year, but Memorial Day somehow takes on a festive tone for some. And it made me think about the fact that we say Yizkor on Yantif, and isn't that strange? I understand to say it on Yom Kippurim, that's the day when we are judged for life and for death. It is, a time, it is a time to invoke those who have passed away. I understand Eila Ezkara, not only on Yom Kippurim, but on Tisha B'Av, saddest day of the year. But on Yanta there's a mitzvah, the Samachta Bechagecha, to celebrate Vaisa Achsameach. So how, on the joyous days of Yantif, can we recite Yizkar? And one who looks in the halachic literature finds that there are two basic approaches. One is to suggest that when we think of those who came before us, and when we recite Yizkar, not in shul, unfortunately, but in our homes, we will remember our fathers and our mothers, our husbands and our wives, our brothers, our sisters, and even sons and daughters that are not with us. How can it possibly be appropriate to weep, to mourn the loss of our loved ones on Yantif? The answer is that we're not mourning. And we should not weep. In fact, it's one of the reasons given why mourners in the first year of mourning don't recite Yizkar. Because they will weep. Because they will cry. Yizkar on Yantif is recited either because it gives us simcha, it gives us joy to know that we have the possibility to take action, to study Torah, to do chesed, to give tzedakah, to give our loved ones merit even beyond life. Because life doesn't end with death. And so we are joyous that we can still do something for those who are not here with us. And the second approach is to say that when we recite Yizkar, the Yizkar is being recited because we know that our loved ones can invoke their merits on our behalf. And we need them to do so at this time during this pandemic. And knowing that they can do so and will do so, that brings us a sense of simcha a sense of joy, a sense of happiness. And so yes, it's appropriate to recite Yizkar on Yantif. And while 
we want those who are deceased, those who are departed, those who we love and miss so much, to bring their merits before God's holy throne. And while we can take some measure of comfort in knowing that we can and that we should do chesed, we should give tzedakah, we should study Torah, so that we can bring merits to our loved ones. It is important that we do the right things for ourselves. It is so noteworthy to me that in the book of Rus that we read on this Yantif of Shavuos, there is an exchange that takes place between Naomi, the old woman who has returned to the land of Israel bereft of her husband and her two sons. She comes with one of two daughters-in-law and they come and they are poor. Naomi was married to Elimelech, a man who was righteous, a man who was wealthy, a man who was a leader, but who made what turned out to be a literally a fatal mistake. By Hirav Baaretz, there was a famine in the land, and Elimelech said, Genuk, I'm finished with all the Mishalachim knocking on my door. I'm getting out of here. I'm moving to the suburbs where they can't find me, even if it means living in Ste Moab, the plains of Moab. And, of course, it had a devastating effect. Elimelech died, and his two sons, Machlon and Chilion, married Rus and Arpa, and they too died. And Arpa ultimately returned to her family. But Rus, Rus Dov Gaba, Rus cleaved to Nami, and they come to the land of Israel. And the people say, Azos Naami, is this Naami? And they finally have remembered her. She thought she was forgotten, and she says, Al Tikranili Naami. Kranali Mara, don't call me Naami, don't call me sweet, don't call me pleasant, call me bitter. Because Hashem has made my life very bitter. And when Rus comes back from collecting in the fields, and she has collected a very generous amount, and Naomi is surprised, and she said, How did this happen? Where did you go? And Rus says, I went to the fields of Boaz. And her response in that moment is, Baruch Hu Lashem Asher Azo Veschasto Esachayim Vesamesim. Blessed is Boaz to God, who has not abandoned the living and the dead. Why did Boaz behave so kindly? Why was he so generous? Not because he knew who Rus was. Yes, he ultimately recognized that she was modest. But he knew that she was the daughter-in-law of Elimelech. And while Elimelech made a mistake, he did the wrong thing. It tarnished his life and his legacy forever. But he was still a great man. And Boaz didn't forget it. How touching it was to Naomi and she understood that someone who has that perspective, as she proceeds to say, he is Goaleinu, he is our Redeemer. We need to do things to bring merits to those who have come before us. Yes, we need to daven that Hashem gives our loved ones an aliyah. But we have to do. And it shouldn't be only for them. It should be for us. It has been months since we have gathered in shul. I naively thought last this past Pesach that this will be the only time 
that I won't be in shul for Yizkar. And now it's Shavuos, and again, we won't be in shul for Yizkar. But that doesn't mean we give up. It doesn't mean that we wallow in self-pity. It means that we learn the lessons of life from Naomi and Rus, who took a beating, who un- endured great hardship. But they built and they rebuilt until ultimately David comes from Rus. Mashiach comes from Rus. Every one of us can learn to strive like Rus did. Every one of us can provide great merits for our loved ones and for ourselves until that time when we gather for the ultimate Geula, may it come, Amen.